We are in L5 and we're looking for the formula for interest paid. So it's under insert function, if, okay, and it's based on the year. So if I5 is greater than zero, if it's true, it'll be 12 times dollar sign F dollar sign six minus K5. And if it's false, zero. So the, for the first row here, which is row five, go ahead and select those amounts, those values. Click your number dialog box and choose currency, two decimal places, dollar signs perfect. Choose the negative numbers in red and parentheses and OK. So we're just going to use the fill handle for J, K, and L. We'll work on uh, the beginning balance in a moment. So select J, K, and L and use your fill handle and go all the way to year 15. Again, don't worry about these figures. They'll change once we are um, fill in the beginning balance in column I. The only thing is um, it has the dollar signs, but I'm going to wait for that. So our formula in I5 is <clears throat> equals J5, which is the ending balance. And then now we can go ahead and it'll constantly take the ending balance to the next row. So go ahead and fill handle all the way to 15. Now we'll select I for year two all the way to L. And we just don't need the dollar sign for every single, um, just the first row. So choose the number dialog box. Currency is there, decimal places is fine. Just change the symbol to none. And OK. So this is your beginning balance. And um, in the end, it shows you the the ending balance, the paid on principal, and the interest paid. And if you were to end at a certain year, you could see how much you would pay on that particular balance and um, what you pay on principal and interest. So in the end, your last paid on interest um, is $735. So that's a lot. So the next thing we're going to do is click down in J20 and type so, subtotal and then press enter, down payment, enter, total cost and a couple of formulas here. So for these two, we just want a subtotal for both columns above it. So if you select above, so K5 all the way to L19, just click auto sum and you get your answers. If you get the um, hashtags, you just want to make this a little bit wider so it fits. And the down payment formula is equals D7. That's what your down payment was. And um, for the total cost, it'll be adding your um, paid on principal, interest paid, and your down payment. So you're adding those three. So equals this cell plus this one plus this one. And in the end, um, you'll end up paying, you can see that right here, the 648357000 on a loan that was only for 404000 Quite a lot. So a few more things to do here. If you wanted to, um, right now it's just um, a lot of numbers and there's three separate uh, calculator charts, schedule chart and an amortization schedule. So to make them stand out a little bit different, what you could do is select just the first part and then choose the alignment dialog box launcher and you can choose border. And I usually choose a thick border, and then you can select any color you'd like, and then click outline. So it's the outline of the section I have um, selected. And then I would choose a thinner line for the separator between the columns. And then I would go to fill. Fill is usually a lighter color, and then OK. Now, the only thing I don't like is I'd like a line underneath mortgage payment calculator, so that row three. So I would click that, go back into the alignment, back into border, and I would choose a thick border, see how it's blank, and just put it on the bottom. And then do the same thing for varying interest rates. So select that, 
go back. You can right click and choose format cells. It takes you to the same box. And I'm going to go with the thick one, but I want to change the color. Do the outline. The inside will be thinner. And then for the fill, a lighter shade and OK. And I'll do the same thing for varying interest rate. Just select that cell, right click format cells. And I just want to go back to border and put that thick one in on the bottom. And the same thing for the last schedule. And you can right click format cells and you can choose any style coloring that you'd like. And a thinner one for inside and then the fill. And again, I'd like to, they have a line here and I'll show you where the other one is. So format cells, border, I want the thick one on the bottom. They also do it on this row where the year 15 is. So format cells, same bottom one. I'll just show you. So it has a line there separating the subtotal. So the other thing, when you're ready to print, if you were to choose file, print, of course it's going to be in portrait, you won't see the whole thing. I think even if we change it to landscape, it still probably doesn't fit. You could scale it so that it fits all on one sheet. What happens if you only wanted to print just the mortgage payment or just the varying interest rate or just the amortization schedule? What you could do is there's two ways to do it. One, you select what you want you would go to page layout and choose print area and then set for print area. Then when you go back to file print, it would be just that area. And I'm just gonna make sure that I go and clear it. Another way you could do it is select it. Don't worry about this print area. Go right to file, right to print. In here, just make sure you choose print what you selected, print selection. So that's a quicker way to do it. So you could print them separately or all together. So a couple other things. So let's say this was a lot of work. There were a lot of formulas uh, and you wanted to um, share this with someone or someone else was working with you and you didn't want them to mess up your formulas that you spent so much time on them. So what you could do is actually protect the cells. So if I were to select D5 to D7, and then also um, Control and F4 to F8, I could go into Review and then choose Protect Sheet and make sure that you have Protect Worksheet and Select Locked and Select Unlock Cells are all checked off and then you click OK. So if I were to go in here now and type a different amount, it won't let me. If I went in here and tried to type something, it won't let me, it's locked. So yes, it's locked, but all someone has to do is click on Protect and then you can type whatever you want in the cells. So it's, it's what you, if you want to really protect it, you would definitely have to give it a password to protect it. Um, and the password you need to write down because there's no way to look for it or find it later on. You can't uh, have it emailed to you at the, um, to reset, so you gotta make sure you write it down, you know it. So um, if you protect it, make sure you give it a password. And the last thing is, um, we're going to, um, I never have changed this. At the bottom, it says Sheet 1. Right-click it and choose Rename. And this really should be the same name as um, the um, Mortgage Payment cal um, Calculator. You can change the color if you like. The tab color doesn't matter. So what we'll do now is with that uh, Mortgage Payment Calculator, right-click, choose Move or Copy, Select Move to End, so it goes after the first one, but make sure you choose Create a Copy so you're getting two, and then click OK. So now you have two, your original and your, your copied one. And this one I'm going to right click and choose Rename, and I'm going to put Condo. So the first one was with our house, and then I'm going to go into the Condo one, and in Item, I'm going to type um, Condo, and this one's a little bit different. And it's going to change all of the numbers 
based on the numbers we type in here. So this one, the condo was 200,000 and the down payment was 50,000. So it changed on all three um, charts. So in the end, you'll see that the loan amount was for 150,000 and in the end, the total cost is 248,000. You'll see it over here too. Um, how the breakdown of if you were to pay it off earlier within the 15 years, and then if the interest varying rate changed what you would pay. So um, this is on the condo. So you have one for the house and one for a condo. And that's a save and submit. Thank you. I'm back. Just one more thing. If you wanted to hide one, you could right click on condo and choose hide and it's gone and you want to get it back. You just right on click on the previous one and choose unhide and you get it back. And you, if you hide more, they would show up and you'd get it back. All right. Now save and submit. Thank you.